just come opening oh, statement. Sure. Y'all, everybody good? Yeah. Um, I just thought, you know, first of all, James Madison has an outstanding team, and I wasn't surprised at all how physical and the, the tough the game was. Uh, I, I can't go to a second sentence without thanking our crowd and the excitement. Man, it feels like 1987 in there, and and you know, I just it's I, there was a couple of times I was on the sideline, and I have it now. I have goosebumps thinking about it because I was a, I, I was so honored to live it back then, and uh, but just to feel that energy that happens in there, it makes it it makes it really neat, and uh, and I'm glad I'm, our guys are getting. An opportunity. It's good to have Randolph Keys. He just spoke to our team. Of course, he's a former first-round pick and uh, one of the all-time greats that's ever played here. So it's good to start seeing a lot of our former players. I saw Gerardo Hinton in the stands. And anyway, um, but I thought I thought uh, again, James Madison, great team, very well coached. Uh, we knew it was a great challenge, and I thought our guys really came out ready, and I thought they played great for 40 minutes. You know, of course, we got in foul trouble in the first half. Y'all probably saw that, and we had some of our key players. Um, had to come to the bench, but it was a testament to the depth that we have. And I thought those guys came in and played like played like starters. Uh, they did. They 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 did. Uh, uh, Tyler Mormon, um, uh, of course, uh, Victor Hart uh, came in and played great. Um, what about? Of course, y'all got to finally got a chance to see. We've been playing without Neftali Alvarez the whole year. You got a chance to see a little bit about what he's about. Um, of course, he's still got a ways to go. Um, it's funny because I have to get Coach Juan. You know, he hasn't been back for long, and, 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 and we've really progressed offensively with a lot of calls and sets and things <laughs> since early in the season when he played. So we either have to run just one or two things, which we did in the first half, and, of course, he made it look like we'd been, we've, he'd been doing it the whole time, or, or Coach Juan has to tell him in Spanish <laughs> from the bench what we're doing. It's, it's a little bit funny, but we, we have fun with that too. But anyway, I thought, I thought Donovan Ivory – Fine, we stepped back up. We needed him to because he's a talent, and I, I thought he played great too uh, all day long. And, and then of course our starters, you know, um, you know DeAndre, you know, just I, I'm so glad for guys like De DeAndre, Denage, uh, Mo, Arnold, uh, of course the guys that were here last year, you know, Tate uh, Ryder, Jeff Armstrong, uh, Tyler Mormon, th those guys that that just. I don't want to say suffer, but that was a tough season, and for them to kind of enjoy, enjoy some of the fruits of their labor and their and, and rewarded for their loyalty is is special to me. And and I say the same thing about our fans, you know, the ones that stuck with us in hard times and they weren't ready to jump off the ship and they hung in there. So they, that's who motivates me every day that we can come in and do those things. So uh, very proud. That was a huge win for us, and and one of the reasons it was such a, a, a important win just besides it being another league win in a, in, a, in a league that's literally a bloodbath every Thursday and Saturday across the board um, is the fact that, you know, we don't play them again. Uh, that was one, that's one of the few teams in the league that we only play once. So, of course, they're going to be right there at the top. And if, 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 if we get in a situation where it's tied, you know, that's going to help with the tiebreaker. So that was a big one too. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to shelve this one and evaluate it, good and bad, starting with myself, the mistakes that I made, um, mistakes our guys made, of course, constructively criticize, and then move, get ready for two tough ones next week because, again, there, there are no easy ones in this league. Question for your coach. Coach, there was – you guys obviously did a great scheme planning because, and you see, they started – there were gaps where there was – they never went, really went on a run throughout the game. Yep. And they started to knock down a few shots, but then you guys would take a turnover here or there. You guys would play well on offense here or there. Um, they tried to match up with y'all on defense, and y'all had an answer for it. Was that more of a, a video or a more of a TV uh, a camera well, a strategy? Or what? Because it was like y'all had an answer for every single thing. And that's important, but but also too, y'all stop them from going on a big run, and I haven't seen that in a while. From you guys. Yeah, I, I thought um, it kind of worked on both ends. Well, first of all, on a on a Saturday game after a Thursday game, you don't have a lot of prep time. Um, but at this point of the year, we we prepare, and of course other people do too, prepare hard every single game for every tactic movement, and so. You, you do this, and this was our uh, 21st game. 
on, so you've done it for 21 games, you've done it for an exhibition game, you've done it for a scrimmage, you've done that the whole time. So now you're beginning to see, as it'd be like a football team, that maybe the second week of the season they saw somebody run in the wishbone. Yeah. Okay, well, they prepared that week, and, and you do have to go back and refresh it. So it, it, it helps to do that this point of the year. Um, you just kind of go back, and, and, and I, I, I mentioned in the pregame about press offenses and things like that. It's just a matter of kind of refreshing. We've already installed. We've already refreshed. We may not have seen it the last three or four weeks, but we go back to it, and the same thing defensively. You see a lot of the uh, 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 same type actions. They may do a little different here and there, and, of course, that's where the, 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 the advanced scouting, one of, our, one of our assistant coaches has what's called an advanced scout. I don't ever, ever, this is just my personal deal, and get this from my high school coach, I never look back over for the next opponent. I, it's hard for me to even tell you right now who we play next Thursday. But one of our assistants has the advanced scout, so when as soon as the game is over with on Thursday, we get right to work upstairs or at home, you know, and, and carry computers home with us and start our advanced scout in preparation for practice the next morning. Then, of course, we come back in on the day of the game. That's no different than any other team does. I'm just telling you, it's, it's, it's incredibly detailed incredibly detailed and uh, uh, you know uh, at this point of the year that's what that's what you're seeing what teams do to us yeah. you know so it, wor it works both ways but it, one of the, the people high school coaches ask me all the time when I'm speaking at clinics and things like that coach you know you were a high school coach and, and, and then a junior coach what's the biggest difference in coaching at those levels in division one and my biggest answer is the basketball part of it's pretty similar yeah. uh, other than the shot clock's different but the main thing that differs the intensity of the preparation and scouting is the biggest, biggest difference. Coach, it seemed like, man, just getting, you know, Thursday night, Naftali getting a little bit of action, but today he was just all over the floor, steals, assists, yeah. you know, baskets, where it's going up and under. I mean, he, he's a, he, again, I, I, you know, y'all never really, and I say y'all, I'm just referring to everybody because he only played, you know, he played at Van, he played in the opener. Then he played at Vanderbilt, of course, was big in the Vanderbilt game, and he got hurt the very next game. So, and very few people were watching us at that time, you know, that's, carry over from, you know, uh, they're not any good or, or whatever. And and so no, very few people ever saw him play. And, and and here's another thing. We've played all that time. And, he you know, of course, he's our, one of our best players and starting point guard. So that's a credit to a lot of other guys in there that stepped up uh, in his absence and has, have, have been able to kind of hold things together. And now now that gives us a chance to reform our team, which, which now we've gotten a little deeper, a little bit better. And y'all can see – the way that we play starts in the first line of that press, okay? And you can see having him and Mo, and now you got an extra guy, an extra body out there, along with our other players, Jeff Armstrong, Austin, you know, Nico Aguirre, of course, when those guys are in there, that, that just gives you a, a – and he's an exceptional athlete, uh, very, very – very tough and hard nosed. So, um, he'll, and he'll just get better and better. I mean, he's just, he's not there yet. I mean, now, but physically he is, and y'all have seen that. So he's not, that's the encouraging thing to me. I didn't expect him to be as far along as he was. That was why it was important to get him in the other night and, and let him play through a few things. And, uh, you know, of course, he, he understood the process. He and I met last night, talked about it again, just, hey, don't, don't be fresh over. But of course, he, he looked like today that he, he's been playing all year. So. You talked about just kind of how he's getting transitioned back to the game. Um, but something that just like sticks out is his ability just to drive and dig. Yeah. You know, what, what does that kind of bring to happen? Uh, it's un un unbelievable because he's so quick and he's got such a, 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 a an explosive first step and he's strong and he gets the back. But he, he, I got on him a little bit today because I thought he passed up a couple of shots in there that he had open layups to try to make the extra play. At the end of the day, I love that because that's what we're about. We're about family. We're about sharing the basketball, making the extra pass, and and he's certainly that guy. But he just brings an element to our team that, of course, we we haven't had, you know, because he's been hurt. So I, I was so glad to see him have a great game today. Coach, you know, I, I cover a bunch of the Pelicans games. You reminded me of Jose Alvarado. Yes, very. That's one of his uh, kind of his idols. Sure is. And because of that, he, he comes in. But my question to you is how has the development with the other players been around him since you said he's been out? Has yeah. is, is that been a oh, quick huge. transition? Well, I mean, you know, the, 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 those guys just all stepped up. We had, we've we always felt like we had great depth. And when he got hurt, you know, we could – what are we going to do? Feel sorry for – we're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. We just got to move on, you know. And, and, he, and, he, and he, he did that. And uh, But it, the problem with Neff's injury is Neff wasn't able to move. You know, he had a – he had, a, he had a Jones fracture last year, and then he re-injured it. 
Of course, thank goodness it wasn't worse than it was. So, but the only thing that helped was time. But you can't go out and run. That's your foot. You know, you can't go out and do anything. You know, so it took some time. We, the doctor kept telling me, Coach, he's making great progress. He's making great progress. He's making great progress. But what ended up happening is, is but he'd say he's not quite ready. He's not quite ready. So we had to make a decision. I probably could have played him two weeks ago. And, but, you know, I was comfortable with where we were. He wasn't 100% ready. And, you know, uh, I just thought it would be better to have him the last six weeks than to try to bring him back a week or two too early and then, you know, not have him then. But, Coach, with the question back to the transition of the other players, if they kind of de develop with him, with his game since he was coming back and forth? Well, it's going to take a little – I think it's going to take us all a little time to, to kind of get back in the flow, get – because we have to now create a new flow sure. that, that we didn't have. One more question. Coach, coming into the game, JMU was ranked in the top three of the nation in scoring. Yeah. And it just seemed like it was kind of reversed this game. You guys got out to a high start and stayed on that high start. And JMU couldn't get into that rhythm. Could you just talk about that rhythm of the flow and just – Well, we, the we're the number one team in the conference and, and yes. <laughs> Sunbelt Conference. We're the number one team in the Sun Belt Conference. They're, they're the number one offensive team in the Sun Belt Conference. So something had to give a little bit today. And, uh, and I want to go back to the crowd. You know, the, defense is about effort and intensity and uh, playing of the motion and, and pride. And, and having a great crowd there, trust me, that, f that fuels our players. It makes them play a little bit harder and a little more spirit. But I was proud. I thought our defensive uh, effort was really good today. Coach Juan Cardona is our defensive coordinator, so to speak, to borrow a football term. And I thought he did a great job of having our team ready. Did you have a question, Taylor? I was going to ask, Coach, just um, the way you all move the ball on offense and the way you play defense, it feels like this team's been playing together for several years. But the fact that it's come together this quick, I mean, will you credit that to? Well, we have a we have a, if if I could, and maybe Jack will, if y'all want to go to look at it. But we have a board in in that's it's it's like this room. Our room is just like this room, but we put we put on the board our standards and culture, and you'll see all these little phrases on there. If, if you want to go in there, you're more than welcome to. All these little phrases in there, and one of them is, a, is taught, of course, there's a lot about team and brotherhood and all that kind of stuff, but you also see one that says .5 mentality, and what that means is, is we don't want guys sitting there and just banging the ball on the floor. It, they've got a half second to decide if you're going to shoot it, pass it, or, or at that point, get rid of it, dribble it, or dribble it. And this stuff about standing and, and bouncing the ball and this and stuff, so what you see is, is this going on all the time. And two of the best that we have at it, are Austin Crowley and Felipe Haas. Uh, th those, those two guys who are leading scorers, those are the guys that, that are quick to pass the ball to other guys too. When you have guys like that that are capable of having big offensive nights and they're two of your best players, but they're also two of your most unselfish players, you got a chance to have a pretty good basketball team. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Here's a, a